Some parts of designs are lead vocalists, out in front receiving adoration, attention, and analysis. Take a handheld game console, for example. In a band composed of many members, what parts of the design attract the most attention? The screen and maybe the controls. We could say that they're the vocalist and lead guitarist. Other parts of the design may receive less attention, but are crucial to our design band. Then there are others still who are not official members of the band, but integral to its success. Managers, roadies, maybe even songwriters. Songwriters, in fact, are a good metaphor for our focus today. Without songs, what is a band? For a gaming console, what is it without the games? But have you ever thought about the design of game cartridges themselves? Ever present, but often forgotten when slotted into the back of a console, mostly functional. But as always, there is more to their design than most people notice. Design of Things 38, Nintendo Game Boy Series Cartridge Design. Today, we'll look specifically at the Game Boy series of cartridge designs to examine the details and their evolution over a period of 15 years of gaming history. Let's begin here with the cartridges designed for the original Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket, used from 1989 to 1998. The original cartridges are a gray that is a few shades darker than the body of the original Game Boy, which is just distinct enough to create clear contrast. This slots nicely into the color scheme of the original console. There is more than just color that allows the cartridge to complement the console's design. It also takes a few other design cues from the console itself, such as these inset lines resembling those on the rear of the console. Though the design overall is boxy and angular, it also includes this pill-shaped round section which meshes with the design language of the original Game Boy that incorporates various soft curves into its otherwise boxy design. The pill shape, technically called a stadium in geometry, has a glossy finish that contrasts the surrounding textured finish, while at the same time allowing light to reflect off the Nintendo Game Boy branding. Because of the concave nature of the stadium, the debossed text creates shadows when viewed from any angle, never disappearing into the background. This is a functional design choice as well, used to pull the cartridge out of the slot, which requires a bit more force than you would think. This notch, beat Apple to it by a couple decades, is purely functional, accommodating the power switch to lock it in place. The bevels here serve the purpose of keying the cartridge so it can slot in only one way. The rear is pretty spartan. The design is all about function, in particular relating to friction. The racing stripes, as we'll call them here, mirror the raised tracks on the rear of the console. If you look closely, you can see the marks of friction, some light scarring from putting the cartridge in. The bottom fifth of the rear is also glossy to ensure it slides into place in the area around the contact points on the front, there's this 44mm by 39mm window, which allows for a small sticker to be placed to show us about the game. In my tiny selection of games, you can see that though small, it's more than enough to display the full title of the game, artwork, and copyright information. Later, we'll see the effects of a smaller size on what can be showcased about the game on this label. Cartridge number two, the black cartridge from 1998, is exactly the same design, but it is interesting because though it retains the same shell, the black color and the color branding indicate that this is a dual cartridge, compatible with both the newly released Game Boy Color and the old monochrome pea green Game Boy. Black was most likely chosen as like gray, it is a neutral color that would look good with the many colors of the OG Game Boy 
or the Game Boy Pocket that had been released by 1998. The dual compatibility is interesting, as the Game Boy Color wasn't simply an upgrade of a color screen. It was also more powerful hardware. Making games that were compatible with both models was not as simple as just throwing a black and white filter on the output. Creating a dual cartridge meant changing or removing assets from the game. Take a look at this dual cartridge. This is a unique act of almost forwards compatibility. So let's move on now from this black transitional cartridge. And we have a true Game Boy Color cartridge, only compatible with the new console, which came out in 1998. This one showcases how design sensibilities had changed since 1989. Overall changes include being slightly more rounded at the corners, they've removed the notch, and they've made lines to the left and the right much more subtle. The back is quite similar to the old cart though, featuring the same glossy tracks and bottom section to reduce insertion friction. The branding and information on the rear has been shifted around and moved a bit. On the front side, the sticker section, though a similar size to the old design, has less usable space because of the obligatory Game Boy Color branding on the left side. Nintendo wants to make it abundantly clear that this isn't an original Game Boy game, as it's also written here on the label. This leaves us with almost a perfect square window for the title and art. Up here on the top, the pill shape is gone, replaced with a bulge that instead has two raised ridges on the bottom side for friction serving the same purpose as the concave stadium on the old version, allowing you to pull it out with your fingers. The cartridge is also made from a smoky, transparent plastic, clearly contrasting the first generation cartridges. This lets us see all the guts, and I love this. This is a great choice. As my Game Boys are a witness, I'm a bit obsessed with clear electronics. Next, we move on to the Game Boy Advance style introduced in 2001. Technological advancement usually results in smaller, more complex technology. This cartridge design follows that trend. Interestingly, the back again has very similar features for friction reduction. You can also see the same bevels are used on the front side to key the cartridge. But in addition, the rear features this right angle cutout on the left and right sides. This has a really cool function. It allows the Game Boy Advance cartridge to pass by a physical switch in the cartridge slot, which maybe you can see here. If this switch is toggled, which it will be by one of the older carts, it tells the Game Boy Advance that this is indeed an old Game Boy game, so the device needs to use old Game Boy hardware to play that game. If a Game Boy Advance cartridge is put in, it doesn't press the switch, and the console knows it can boot up in the mode for a Game Boy Advance game. It's simple, but it's a pretty cool mechanical solution. For more detail, check out Modern Vintage Gamer Link in the description. The ability to play old Game Boy games on the GBA hardware is definitely a plus, but the console design is clearly made with these smaller cartridges in mind, not the larger old ones. Look at how they pop out of a Game Boy Advance or a Game Boy Advance SP. These cartridges are also a neutral color. This dark slate color goes well with any color version of the console. The solution for pulling the cartridge out of the console has changed from originally this stadium to a bulge and now to a raised bridge of sorts that you can pull on with the end of your finger. The branding is squeezed into the space below it. This time there is drastically less space to advertise what game it is. The width is still 44 millimeters, 
but the height is only 23 millimeters, giving the sticker only about 60% of the usable space as the oldest cartridge. This directly affects what artwork can be displayed. Previously, the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Carts could fit a title and some artwork, such as a character. Here in this reduced space, you don't often see more than just the title, though some do get quite ornate and creative with type and lettering. It's a small but interesting side effect. The design of the Game Boy series cartridges demonstrate an evolution of both function and form, showing that even in the most ignored or seemingly ordinary designed objects, there are wonderful things to discover. Until next time on Design of Things.